Let your glory be revealed. Take complete control, Lord. Come rule, come reign, Lord, in Jesus' name. Take complete control, Lord. Come rule, come reign, in Jesus' name. Take complete control, Lord. Take complete control, God. Be glorified in the midst of your church, Lord. Come rule, come reign. Take complete control, Lord. I yield myself to you, O oh living God. I yield myself to you, Lord Jesus. I yield myself to you, O oh living God. Take complete control. Roll over my soul, take complete control. Roll over my soul, I yield myself to you. Just lift your hands towards heaven. I yield myself to you, Lord Jesus. I yield myself to you, Lord, take complete control. 
Come rule and reign over me. Take complete control. Come be glorified in me. Take complete control. E cada mangerna, e cada vala vaquila, la 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 borra, la 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 bebra, la 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 vivere ver, mamma mamma nina la la mano, guerra bebe brive il shor, mamma mamma nina la la mano, zerre bebe bebe, ti do non mando robo, zerre bebe, prima mamma dire vavololo, te complete control, zerre bebe, che non mamma nina la 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 mano. Ora ve 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 va va to solo mamma mamma nam breve Ora ve ve mamma mando la mangiera mamma non me ne Lord we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Father I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks and destroys off every yoke Father I thank you that you remove everything out of the way that would try to stop prayer and praise. Father, all those things that men and, and, and the powers of darkness would try to set up against you so that men don't know how to touch you and be touched by you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that those things would forever come to an end in the life of those people who are called by your name. We've been touched by your glory. Oh, Rabba Sikarita, oh, Joshai Debre, Malananan Bandereteo, Zalalala Kipra Mombando, Babrevedeo. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. I bless you, Lord, with all my heart. Lord, we bless you now with all our soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless and praise your holy name. <laughs> Lord, we bless and praise your holy name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Blessed is the name of the Lord. Oh, glory and honor and power and might and dominion unto the name of the living God. Lord, take your power and reign. Lord Jesus, take your power and reign. Lord, take your power and reign. Take your power and reign, Lord. <laughs> Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Uh, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Uh, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Even so, come quickly, Lord. Come now, take your power and reign. 
come now Take your power and reign Come now Take your power and reign Come now Take your power and reign Take your power and reign Even so come quickly Lord Even so come Take your power and reign. Take your power and reign. Take your power and reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, my God. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we magnify and praise your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> I will bless you, Lord, with all that is within me. I will bless and praise your holy name, Almighty. Almighty God. <laughs> Everybody lift your voice and shout to the Lord. Lord, we shout to you. Lord, we shout to you. <laughs> our voice and praise. Ha <laughs> Lord, we lift our voice and shout to you. <laughs> Lord, we lift our voice and praise. Lord, we lift our voice and we shout to you. Lift our voice and pray. Lord, we lift our voice and shout to you. Lord, we lift our voice and pray. Lord, we lift our voice and shout to you. <laughs> Lord, we lift our voice and pray. Lord, we lift our voice and shout to you. Ah. Ah. Lord, we lift our voice and
Hallelujah. In our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven, and give us this day our day. Yeah. 
Father, there's nothing like your peace, nothing like your joy, nothing like your love, nothing like your love for me. Oh God, Lord, there's nothing like your peace, nothing like your joy, there's nothing like your love. Nothing like your love for us. There's nothing like your love, oh God. Just raise your hands, lift your hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, here I am to worship you, Lord Jesus. 
Here we are to worship you, Lord God. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful. Tell me, you're altogether worthy, altogether holy, altogether wonderful. To Lord Jesus Christ, all living God, holy is your name, holy is your name, washed in your blood, washed in your blood, born of your spirit, born of your spirit, filled with your glory, filled with your glory. All by you, washed in your blood, washed in your blood, filled with your spirit, filled with your spirit, living in your glory, living in your glory, all by you, all by you, Lord Jesus Christ. My living God, Lord Jesus Christ, I worship you, I worship you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, my living God, Lord Jesus Christ, I worship you, I worship you. Washed in your blood, washed in your blood, born of your spirit, born of your spirit, filled with your glory, filled with your glory, all by you, all by you, washed in your blood, born of your spirit. Filled with your glory, all by you, Lord Jesus Christ, I worship you, Lord Jesus Christ, I worship you. Lord Jesus Christ, my living God, my living God, Lord Jesus Christ, I worship you, Lord Jesus Christ, you're the living God, you're the living God. Lord Jesus Christ, I worship you. Washed in your blood. Washed in your blood. Born of your spirit. Born of your spirit. Filled with your glory. Filled with your glory. Lord, all by you. 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 you. Washed in your blood. Washed in your blood. 
Washed in your blood, born of your spirit, filled with your glory, all by you. Hallelujah. Lift your, lift your voice one more time with me. Lord Jesus Christ, the living God, the living God, Lord Jesus Christ, I worship you. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, the living God, Lord Jesus Christ, I worship you, washed in your blood, born of your spirit. All by you. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> Hallelujah. Washed in your blood, born of your spirit, filled with your glory, all by you. Hallelujah. Well, I've got some good news for you tonight. I came into place with absolute power and authority over sickness and disease and sin. If you have any of those torments working in your life, whether you're here in this place with us right now, or you're watching by web, or perhaps you're watching by YouTube, I want you to understand that the power and the authority of God is conveyed upon His Word. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to announce the Word of the Lord Jesus Christ to you. And if you receive those things that God is doing as His Word is going forth, your heart's open to believe those things that He says, you'll instantly receive the grace that He's given. It's grace enough to take care of whatever your problem is. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> My throat's a little clogged up by all this dust in this place, but I'm going to still shout. <laughs> it might be a scratchy one. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah. <laughs> Washed in your blood, born of your spirit. Filled with your glory All by you Thank you, Father Lord, I thank you that you teach your people how to touch heaven I thank you, God, that you teach your people How to interact with you so that they may be able to receive the things that not only they need, but a lost and dying world around them needs to be able to see <laughs> and receive from somebody who's got something from God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated.
Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah, baby. Say hallelujah. Yeah. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. One more time. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, her. Baby, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We could get her going here. I was hoping to get her to preach some tonight. She's a little exhausted from the trip. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, my man, and Gisha bound a number dead at Ipacala story. You know, the Lord's made the moving of His Spirit, He's made the outpouring of the Holy Ghost something that is so easy to have. People who read in the Bible, they look back in days of Moses, days of Elijah, days of, the, of Jesus, days of Paul, and they go, oh, I'd like to be in that church in that day. You'd look the same, act the same. <laughs> because we're in, the same, we're in the same church, we're in the same atmosphere. You don't receive now, you wouldn't receive then. You don't know how to plug in now, you won't know how to, wouldn't know how to plug in then. It didn't matter what was going on around you. You'd have the same problems. It wouldn't be your car, it'd be your camel. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're just telling you this way it is. Father has made it so easy for everybody to be able to receive these things. People want to just talk about them. Today, a lot of folks have just been talking about the power of God. They've talked about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. They've talked about the life and the, and the glory of the resurrection and heaven that has come down to fill our souls. But... So many people have failed to realize how easy it is to have Pentecost. How easy it is to interact, to be caught away in the Spirit. Hallelujah. See, we call Sunday the Lord's Day, you know. The reason we call Sunday the Lord's Day is because it's the day that He rose up from the dead. That's why, we, that's why we gather together on Sunday. I wouldn't be surprised if the Lord returns on a Sunday. Because the Scripture says when men least expect it. And so I figured most people least expect the Lord would come on Sunday anyways. I've set my heart on most expecting Him to come on Sunday. It's the Lord's Day. It's fitting. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Probably on Sunday night it's a perfect time. <laughs> the close of the evening, you know. When everybody, all they've got on their mind is that they've got to get up and go to work in the morning. All I have on my mind is to get up and go to heaven. All I have in my mind is to hear the sound of a trumpet, the voice of an archangel. All I have in my mind is to, is to see this work finished and to go on, move on in to the next dimension of God's divine program. I'll tell you, it's exciting. <laughs> Hallelujah. This, these, these are the things that we're living for. You might as well go ahead and smile. You're in church. Amen. <laughs> you came. You might as well participate at some level. Praise God. <laughs> What's happening? I'm having Pentecost all by myself. I have Pentecost on Sunday. I have Pentecost on Monday. I have Pentecost on Tuesday. Pentecost on Wednesday, Pentecost on Thursday, Pentecost on Friday, Pentecost on Saturday, Pentecost on Sunday, get filled with the Spirit on Monday, filled with the Spirit on Tuesday, filled with the Spirit on Wednesday, filled with the Spirit on Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and so on. I walk in the glory of God on Monday, on Tuesday. I live in this realm divine fellowship that Father has made possible. Hallelujah. Through Christ Jesus, the vine. I'm dwelling in the vine. I'm living by His light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, tomorrow morning, tomorrow I'll get up and I'll have to do some various different things. I have to do some things that God's put me responsible to do in the realms of business and job and things that are on my plate to do, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn, it's not going to dichotomize my life and I'm going to have this kind of separate life. I'm going to live, walk around doing everything in the realms of faith. Whatsoever is not faith is sin. I'm walking around loving God, praising God, keeping myself in yielded to the Holy Ghost. And we encourage you guys to do the same. I want you to understand that you can have a Pentecostal meeting in the morning before you ever leave your house. 
I mean, we live in a commuter society here in San Diego. You can have Pentecost driving in your car going down the road. You can have a Holy Ghost meeting that will fill you up and satisfy your soul and empower you for everything you need throughout the whole entire day. You choose what it is. People, so many people choose to live in the frustration and anxiety and pain and torment. Now listen, they don't want to live your life that way. God made a way for us to be able to live out uh, this life in heaven by the resurrection of Jesus. The things that Father has given to every one of us without measure, abundant supply. You know what? I'm telling you, listen to me. You don't want to live in heaven now? You wouldn't like it later anyways. You might as well just go on and be with the rest of the folks that you basically like, doing the things, same things they do. You know what I'm saying? People won't like heaven if, they've got a, if, if the only way they can get happy is to get drunk. The only way they can get happy is to do drugs. The only way they can do, get happy is to have the opiate, you know, of making money and, and you know, whatever else that people pursue in all various different walks of life. You wouldn't be happy in heaven because all in heaven, all there is in heaven is Jesus. All there, heaven, all there is in heaven is His glory and His presence. Now, for me, that's all I desire. I tell you, that defines life and a good time to me. And a lot of folks don't understand that, but I'm just telling you right now, equally, I don't understand what your problem is. I don't understand why you want to live like you're living. So you might think I'm messed up. I think you're far more messed up. So we, you know, huh? I'm going to go with God. You go with whoever it is you think you're going with. I'm going to go with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to follow Him. Jesus said, come unto me. Take up your cross. Follow me. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. If any man will come after me, if anybody wants to come to me, let him take up his cross. And then, in other words, it's, and I just want you to understand very plainly, God says you cannot any longer do your will. Somebody says, well, then how, what do I know I'm supposed to do? If I can't do my will, I'm, all I've ever done all my life is do my will. All I've done all my life is to live for myself, whatever ideas, whatever ethics, whatever you know, dictates of the culture is around me. That's what I've done. I've lived my life based upon what I think is right, based upon what I believe I should be doing. And now you're telling me that I'm not supposed to do my will. No, you're not supposed to do your will. You're not supposed to live for yourself. You're supposed to do the will of the Father. You're supposed to live for Him. Somebody said, well, how do I do that? You follow Jesus. Well, how do I do that? You just live out what the Word of God says for you to do. You walk in the Holy Ghost. You walk in the Spirit. Somebody said, well, I don't really understand how to do that. Don't worry about it. He's come to teach you. He's come to show you. He's come to instruct you one step at a time, one day at a time. Hallelujah. That's something you can do. You, that's, that's the way the church got started. That's the way the church functions. Should be flowing out all the time. And if it's not, we want you to grow and mature into these wonderful expressions of the Holy Ghost so that you can understand how to hook up with God, how you can connect with God. People, I'm telling you, it's just all this ritual is nonsense. I was watching on the news before I came to church. Man, a guy, he, he was like had a mop. He was sticking in a bucket and sprinkling people, just soaking him, soaking him with whatever it was in that bucket. And that's all they know about God. This guy comes along, sprinkles them, man, because it's Easter. Of course, I'm, I'm in the Resurrection Sunday, but for them it's Easter and they go out in a big old mop with water all over the thing and it's supposed to, I don't know what it's supposed to do, but I'm like, my goodness, those poor people. They think that's what God's all about. They think that's what Jesus is all about. They think that was, that's what the Holy Ghost is all about. But I'm gonna say nothing about that. I'm gonna tell you right now, let every man be a liar, including me, including you. Let God be true. Let's, let's set aside all these crazy notions and ideas. You don't need a book that a man wrote so that you can understand the Bible. You can go to the pages of the Bible and the Lord made it so simple that even a child or a baby can understand it. You are without excuse. God says you're without excuse. Right. He's made it so easy. God's made it so easy. He comes and changes our nature and gives us an instinct to follow God. Gives us the instinct to know what's right. Isn't that beautiful? 
gives us the instinct. He gives us the nature. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh, the birds migrate because they have an instinct within their nature. They know what to do and when to do it. You know, scientists try to figure out how that works. Scientists can't even figure out how they fly. Forget about how, you know, the rest of it works. Goodness gracious, man, men's limited in his knowledge. Maybe one day he'll catch up, but I mean, you know, I wouldn't count on it. God's put in our instinct and in our nature how to serve him, how to live for him, how to just have this life, how to just have this life. He just gave it to us as a gift, his life, this good life. But all the circumstances and situations, all these things that run interference around us that we listen to, all these lies. You believe a lie and be damned. You, you, come into a, you come into all the various different opinions that you, you know, have developed and other people around you developed. And it keeps you from knowing how to receive all that the Lord is supplying I'm telling you, God's got fire, God. He's got fire of the Holy Ghost. He's got Pentecost for you right now. So everything about your life can be changed. So that you know how to receive from God. The natural man can't receive anything from God. It's all foolishness. They hear me, they, they hear me begin to... And they don't even, they go, my goodness, that's foolish. You know, I found that, I found that religious people have a bigger problem with it, however, than... To completely radically lost. They just think it's a beautiful language. Hey, what, that's a beautiful language. What is that, Joe? What language is that? That's my native tongue. It is. Where are you from? Well, see, that's heavenly tongue. I'm a citizen of heaven. Hallelujah. It's something that I, I ascribe to. It's something I do all the time because I was baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And God gave me this wonderful outworking of the Spirit in my life. And so I give myself continually to these wonderful expressions of the Holy Ghost because He takes me somewhere with it. And, you know, I was so blessed on Wednesday night. Just got everybody up here and let's, let the fire of God fall upon you. And I heard that wonderful flow of the heavenly language coming out of most of the people that are here. And some people just think that's something we do on Wednesday night or something we do every once in a while. This is how I live. This is how we live. This is how God birthed the church into existence. God didn't birth the church into existence with somebody taking a mop, sticking it in a bucket, and sprinkling it all over folks. I mean, it wasn't a mop. It was a stick about that long, and it looked like it had a big mop thing on the end of it, you know? And that's why these people are ducking. Or getting, some of them are getting subbed. Man. Oh, Lord Jesus. My heart goes out for them. Poor folks, they're already, our country's already in upheaval on the, on the brink of war, and they got somebody, the best they can get to do them is suck them down with some water. The, the, I'll tell you right now, the, the Ukraine needs Holy Ghost revival. It's a perfect time. It's a perfect time to go in and do a mass evangelism crusade in Ukraine. <laughs> somebody needs to be raised up with a special anointing for the Ukraine with a special anointing. And I believe God wants to raise up a, a mass of people, a great company of people, not just a few, because it seems like just a few, just they just get worn out and turned upside down and don't work out. But my, if everybody had an anointing for every nation, and you know, you had, my goodness, I mean, let's just say that, you know, you had 10,000 saints with an anointing for every nation, and they invaded that nation. My goodness. Whew. I mean, they said there's 700 they said there's something like 700 million. I'm having a hard time believing it, but they say there's 700 million people that know the Lord and full of the Holy Ghost. And my goodness, if there was 700 million people that know the Lord and full of the Holy Ghost, we should be able to bring this thing to a quick end. You know what I'm saying? Huh? People think that, well, I guess people think that all they need to do is come to church, learn how to be good, and have a good life, you know, and, you know, be sweet and kind and, and do what's right and, and go home, do whatever it is that they're going to do. But that's not what the Lord called us. He called us, come follow him. Somebody said, well, you saying I must quit my job and follow Jesus? Probably. If you ask that question, you probably need to quit your job and go follow Jesus. You ask that question, that's it's probably because the Lord's dealing with your heart like that. Because I didn't say that. However, you know, you should be willing to. And somebody said, well, what are we going to do? I mean, we'll be irresponsible. No. The Lord said, make the kingdom of God the most important thing to you in his righteousness, and he'll take good care of you. 
He, he takes care of the birds. You're more important than birds. Huh? He closed, the, he closed the field. You're more important than a field. He said he'd give all these things. He'll add all these things to you. The Lord will make you rich and add no sorrow with it. God says in the Old Testament, he says, prove me with the offerings. Prove me with your tithes and offerings. See if I won't up the winds of heaven. Pour out more than you can possibly contain. I'd like to see somebody so take a hold of God and so take a hold of faith that the blessing of God can be on them like it was on Abraham and more. You know, people take a hold of their own pursuits in life and then they want to go around, you know, and flash around, you know, whatever prize they won, whatever value system that they, they have ascribed to and they've, you know, earned their tokens and then they make themselves feel worthwhile. That's meaningless. That's meaningless. It will do nothing for you the moment you breathe out your last breath. I'm going to tell you right now, you want to make, you want to put your treasure in heaven. You want your heart to be in heaven. You don't want your heart and your treasure to be here on this earth. Because I'm telling you, wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And you don't want for death to come visit you and have a claim on you. You want to rather have escaped the power of death because you're hidden in the bosom of Jesus. You're living in the glory of his love. Your heart, your treasure is in the, in the kingdom of God. Your heart is there too. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, girls, I'm going to tell you what you ought to do. I saw your dad probably getting the, the, more, the, the, probably the realest breakthrough that he's ever had. Now, what you need to do is you need to get on your knees. You begin to cry, cry out and fast. No, I mean, cry out and pray for him. Jer, uh, Jason, can, Jason can fast. <laughs> Jason and Bill can fast. You girls can't fast. One, you're going to have a baby, and one, you need to eat more. <laughs> but, but you need to get on your heart and face before the Lord. Pour out your heart before God. See this thing broken. He's ripe for the picking right now. He's ripe for the picking. It's time for a breakthrough. When you see these opportunities set up, you don't just take, you just don't just, you know, let it just, you know, take it for granted and let, just let the things develop as they will. Well, prayer is the power to change things. Prayer is the power to run off demon spirits that would want again come again and, and, and bring them back into bondage just through some other, some other means. And I say all this for all of you, for all of your families. This, I'm telling you, many of your families are in, that people that are represented right here. Your families are nothing but religious. They don't know God. They know about God. They ascribe to religion. They don't have any proof or evidence that they've been born of the Spirit. You have to have a proof. You have to have an evidence that you've been born of the Spirit. You have to have a witness from heaven that you are alive from the dead. That witness is given to us the instant, the instant that we are born of God. And there are more people that have ascribed it to religion and become a part of religion and said a few words and nothing, nothing about their life, nothing about their instinct, nothing about their nature was changed. They don't have an instinct to walk in the Spirit. They don't have an instinct and a nature to want to please the Father, to want to do His will. Where the idea and the concept of taking up our cross, denying ourselves, taking up our cross and following Him is something that they embrace. They can't even begin to comprehend it. The very, the very evidence is presented when their, their own natural mind refuses the things that the Spirit of the Lord is saying. The bottom line of it is this. John said, he that hears us, hears God. He that does not hear us, does not hear God. And I encourage you, start reading the Bible. Start reading the Word of God. It's the, it's the complete works of God. Somebody said, I got the complete works of Finney. You got, I got the complete works of God. <laughs> right here in the Bible, it's the complete works of God. People want to, they want, Satan wants to try to discredit it. He wants to try to run it down. He wants to try to somehow set up some kind of a lie that it's been changed, that it's been altered. I'll tell you, it hasn't been changed. You can't by the power of God. It's been changed and altered as much as God's been changed and altered. It's as messed up as Jesus is. Got that? If God has not been changed or altered, neither is his word. And I tell you, he hasn't. And if Jesus isn't messed up, neither is his word. Hallelujah. He's either God or is he? He isn't. He's right. He's either got control, has all authority in heaven and earth. Come on. My Amen. goodness. Somebody thinks they're going to run over top of God. Hey, there's been a lot of people try to write different, you know, author different, uh, you know, 
ideas and concepts that they've tried to, you know, integrate into the Bible, they've not, they've not succeeded. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> the Lord watches over His Word. He's got a company of people, which I'm a part of, living in this divine grace, living in this divine glory. Today we've been celebrating, as we do every Sunday on the Lord's Day, we've been celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, John said, I was caught up into the Spirit in the Lord's Day. On the Lord's Day, he was evidently having church all by himself because he was out on the Isle of Patmos. And the Lord said, my goodness, you can't church all by yourself. Just come on up here and have church with us here in heaven. Huh? And uh, it was a powerful Holy Ghost meeting. In that meeting that he had, he was able uh, there at that time to see all the things that were going on in, in the future. I'm going to turn this one off and see if I can get this other mic because I don't know what's going on with the sound system, with these mics and whatnot. And I don't have time to figure it out, so everybody can just pray for those who are working on it. Everybody's working on them. They're exhausted. They've been working hard. That's their hearts. And so he was caught away. You know, you hear people talk about all the time how that there is, uh, that rapture isn't in the Bible. Well, you know, technically that would be true, but that isn't true because reality of it is is the Lord talks about the catching away, to be caught up. And uh, there was a lot of people caught up. Enoch was caught up. Elijah was caught up. Jesus was caught up. Paul was caught up. Huh? John was caught up. I'm going to be caught up too. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Because it's one of two things with respect to the resurrection from the dead. And that is either... We die and we go up into the glory of heaven and we're clothed upon with the tabernacle, by the way. I'm going to speak to you about these things tonight. Waiting for the resurrection of the dead. And the scripture says that we which are alive and remain will not prevent those who are dead. For the dead in Christ shall be raised up first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Yeah. And, and so this is what we live for. We li you need to adjust the sound. Take it back to where it was. We live, we live for the resurrection. We live for the resurrection from the dead. And Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection because he raised up from the dead. We get to raise up as well. Just take it all the way back down to where it was. Just. Hallelujah. I'll hold it up here close. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm going to give you the most important subject you need to listen to. Uh, everybody that's watching me and everybody that's in this place, you need to understand that there is an appointed time that is going, that is, God has in his heart to settle all of this thing that is going on. And it's all settled within the framework of the resurrection. Our whole ministry is about the resurrection from the dead. That's the whole ministry of the Lord Jesus as the one who raised up from the dead. He then appointed those who would follow him and gave them the power and the authority to be witnesses of his resurrection. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you through some of the things tonight about the resurrection of the dead. And I pray that you'll grab a hold of these things and that you'll have this faith on the inside of you. And, and I'm going to go ahead and start right here in Philippians chapter 3. And then I'm going to kind of work myself around to a couple of different verses of scripture that I really want you to grab a hold of and start, start living it and start thinking about it and have these things on your heart and your mind, get them settled in your spirit. Make, the most, make them the most important thing about your everyday existence. In Philippians um, chapter 3 and verse 10, Paul says, he says, that I may know him, speaking of Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, so that if by any means possible, I too might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. 
to Paul, the most important thing was that he gets to be a part of the resurrection of the dead. Now, I want you to turn with me and I want to begin. I want you to show you something about what he believed in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 in verse 16. And I'm going to go ahead and start in verse 15. I'm going to tell you, I just want to let everybody know what I believe and what I believe that Paul believed. I believe that Paul absolutely believed in the catching away. I believe that Paul believed in the catching away before the tribulation. I believe that he taught, and I can even begin to show you here tonight, I don't know how much you can go into it, that he actually taught and believed that he would be part of the catching away. He didn't believe that things would go on this long. I'll show you. Oh, I guess this microphone does it too, huh? Well, I'll tell you what, won't you turn this one off and I'll turn this one back on. Let's see if we can get something to stop popping. Uh, well, just for a service, maybe. I was going to say for a few minutes. I want to have a little bit more faith than that. <laughs> I'm going to show you that Paul, here in 1 Thessalonians, and I'm going to show you also over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that he, he really believed he was going to be a part of the catching away, which most people call the rapture. And some people call it the rupture. And then we got derogatory things to say about it. I don't know why. There is far more evidence that there is a catching away than that there is not a catching away. I don't know why people get all worked into a frenzy about the resurrection. See, the most important thing about this is the catching away to be caught up with the Lord or to be raised from the dead is all about the resurrection. We don't want to be messing wrong with the resurrection. We want to be happy about the resurrection. You want this good thing. I'm not looking for no antichrist. I'm looking for the Christ. Paul didn't look for no antichrist. He was looking for the Christ. If he believed that he was, listen, if he believed and he did, that he was going to be caught away, that he was going to go up in the catching of the way, then he would have talked more about the Antichrist than he was expected to come on the scene like all these other people do. All these other people, they got these all these scenarios. They talk about how, you know, the mark of the beast is going to come. Now we're going to have all this trouble. We're in the sixth seal and all the other mess and nonsense because they, they, they messed up and they're thinking. Paul didn't talk anything about that. He's talking about seeing Jesus. Huh? Don't tell me he believed he was going through the tribulation. He not one time ever even suggested. He not one he believed that he would be alive at the coming of the Lord, but never one time mentioned or even slightly hinted at a, of an idea of going through some tribulation. We're going through the resurrection, not some tribulation. We got not tribulation. <laughs> we don't need it anymore. God's appointed us unto salvation, not unto wrath. He's made a way to where that we could escape the wrath that is to come because he's appointed us unto the day of the Lord. That's what Paul taught. Yeah. Besides that, there, when the tribulation comes, there's going to be no more harvest. So what are you going to be doing anyway besides sitting on your hands? And before, but furthermore, I mean, right now is the point. People talking about all the things they're going to do during the tribulation. They're not doing nothing now. What are you talking about? Give me a break. Angels will fly through heaven. God raised up 144,000 virtuous men that are Jews. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Then they're going to be, they're going to get a catching away. They're going to be caught up in heaven in the middle of Daniel's 70th week or what we call the seven year tribulation. Three and a half years into it, they're going to be caught up. And if I were around and I saw the abomination that makes desolate that was talked about by the prophet Daniel, I would be able to tell you the very day and hour that Christ Jesus was coming. And then that would be contrary to the word of God. So we know that ain't going to happen because we're given the very number of days and the events that are centered around it. So all this hocus pocus that there is no catching away. I'm just I don't want to try to take away from you the hope of the resurrection. I want to I want to diminish it tonight. Amen. I want to get rid of it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I want you to get over here in every day living as those who are ready to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air to be with the Lord. And caught up, maybe some people say, well, we're going to get caught up to meet the Lord in the air so we can just come right back. That doesn't make any sense. Jesus was caught up. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jesus was caught up, you're just going to have to ignore it. You just have to ignore the popping. There's nothing anybody can do about it, okay? Praise God, we got some kind of a mac microphone. Amen. Jesus was, is the first fruits of the resurrection, and he was caught up, and he didn't come back yet. Huh? You and I are going to get caught up after the same manner of the resurrection, and we aren't going to come back till he comes back. Yes. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go to bed tonight. I'm going to be in expectation to hear the trumpet of the Lord call. Sound? Some people are going to go to bed tonight. They're going to be in expectation to wake up and hear the Antichrist call. I don't know why are people rather ready to just look at, they're ready for disaster. The mind is so negative. They're just ready, prepared for disaster. You're not prepared for disaster. You think you're prepared for disaster and the disaster comes and you run and scared out of your mind. I mean, your heart fails you for fear. You with me? I mean, when the tribulation comes, I'm going to say it again, there is no more harvest. Men have come to such rebellion that God will actually appear in the heavens. I mean, the scripture says in Revelation chapter 6, that the heavens will be rolled back like a scroll. People can walk outside, look up into the sky, and see the Father sitting on the throne of Jesus' right hand. Instead of walking outside and seeing the stars, they're walking outside and seeing the sun. They walk outside and see. And what are they going to do? They're going to scream and cry out, let the rocks fall upon us and hide us from the face of him that sits upon the throne and from the Lamb. <laughs> that's not revival. That's, not, no. that's, not, that's the opposite of revival. Amen. That's extreme resistance. This extreme apostasy. And the scripture says, and still they will not repent. And angels are flying through the heavens with the everlasting gospel. It's their turn to preach. Ah, hallelujah. Between the angels and the 144,000, you are redundant. If you were here, you are absolutely not needed unless you're one of the 144,000. And boy, you're going to have a hard time convincing me of that. Huh? Uh, I had a woman come up to me, and I, she said, I'm one of the 144,000. I said, you're a strange-looking, virtuous man to me. <laughs> you're a strange-looking, virtuous man to me who has not known a woman. <laughs> I'm going to figure something out here. Lord Jesus, we pray right now for a miracle healing for this thing oh in Jesus name yeah. strange ideas people get I had some people saying oh no they're trying to put under the wire they got to, they're trying to sneak in this uh, this chip they want to put in you it's the mark of the beast I said, look it ain't gonna work that way Everybody who's going to get it are going to take it voluntarily. They want, want it. It's not going to be snuck in on them. Some chip. People, we are strange folks. Huh? The Lord called us peculiar, not strange. We need to get a transition from the strange over into the peculiar. Peculiar is a word to talk about it's a special treasure. Hallelujah. Some chip. Some chip. Somebody said, yeah, they're already, they're already sticking it in people when they're born and before the mom and dad gets them out of the, nur out of the nursery. They already got it. you paranoid. you got some a disease. You need to be healed and cured. That's all nonsense. I'm going to tell you the world is going to a place of voluntarily, willingly worshiping Satan. It's all being set up right now. That is true. You can see as people are being conditioned through the movies in Hollywood, you see as people are being conditioned by the idols that are set up. I'm going to tell you right now. You listen to me. The Lord showed me this. Those, those folks that people idolized back in the days of the 60s, uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix and, 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 and the Beatles, I'm telling you, people, these folks were filled with the devil. 
Some of them were even sorcerers. They knew they were, they were worshipers of Satan. They knew exactly what they were doing. Folks said, oh, no, it's just a part of their show. You know, it's just a show. Or you're making too much out of it. I'm telling you, I've seen with my own eyes, discerned with the wonderful grace that God has given, the demon power that they are under, the, the, the God of this world that they serve. These folks were used as, as it were, giants in the kingdom of darkness to advance a satanic agenda that God is allowing because God is going to allow men ultimately come to the full place of iniquity where they choose to worship Satan. The scripture says Satan will be cast down out of heaven. He will be cast out of the unseen realm, in other words. He will come, in the, this is the middle of the tribulation, he will come and dwell and interact and interface with men listen to me okay and and the nations of the earth will serve him they will come and follow him and as an army in allegiance to him to go up and fight against God and fight against his saints and you don't want to participate with all of that garbage that's going on coming over the airwaves it's I mean you know Paul said he's the God of this world, the prince and the power of the atmosphere, the prince and the power of the air. And my, how has that really now begun to be expressed and manifested in a way that I don't think Paul could have possibly imagined. Maybe God gave him a vision of it. But truly now by the airwaves of television, by the airwaves of the internet, by the airwaves of the satellites that right now orbit our, our earth that are literally bombarding us with all kinds of lies and filth and propaganda and slander. Satan is doing exactly what he was doing when he tried to overthrow God when he went and deceived the mighty princes, the mighty angels that stood around the glory of God for eons of time, for an indefinite period of time. If he can deceive these mighty angels of God, what do you think you and I are going to do about the power that rages against us? I'm telling you, you don't have enough intellect, you don't have enough strength, you don't have enough savvy, enough ability to fortify yourself against what Satan is doing. There's only one ark of safety. There's only one place of protection. You're going to have to come step over gear in this place that God has provided for us in Christ Jesus. Be baptized in the realms of divine power and glory when he gave to us his Holy Spirit. Live by the word and walk in the spirit. Otherwise, you don't have any hope. I believe that the Lord Jesus said, if you add to this book, your name will be taken out of the book for one reason. If you add to the book, you will open yourself up to deception and deception will take your name out. I believe that the Lord Jesus said that if you take away from the book, as much as add to the book, you take away from the book, First of all, I, I, if you add to the book, rather, these plagues will be added to you. Because once again, adding to the book is like taking away from the book. It's going to open you up to deception. And deception is going to result in you finding yourself under the same kind of, of torment that rages out of Satan, whether you're on this earth or whether you're under the earth. Or in the earth, as it were. Because it's a real place called hell. Just as there's a real place called heaven. Just as the real place called earth. Said, I can't imagine that. Well, can you imagine right now spending at 33,000 miles per hour? And traveling through space at some un unbelievable speed. I don't, remember what all the, I don't remember what all the parameters are, but it's amazing. We're right now spinning very, very fast and traveling through space in our orbit. Pretty radical, huh? I think we're traveling. I think we're traveling in a trajectory 33,000 miles per hour, and I don't know how fast we're spinning. Figure that out, huh? And in those days, the moon should be dark and become like sackcloth. That means it's a continuous eclipse. So I'd imagine that the Lord's just going to cause everything 
put on brakes and stand still. Shasta's going to pop. It is. Mammoth's going to blow. Every volcano is going to erupt that you can think of. The earth will shake and, 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 and reel back and forth like a drunken man. It will. There will be no more sea. It will all dry up. Somebody said we in the sixth. Somebody, I heard somebody say we in the. I think they said that we're in the sixth trumpet or something like that. My goodness. By the sixth trumpet, there is no more rivers. There are no more streams. And there is no more sea. It's all dried up. I mean, I could take you and walk you through all these scriptures. I'm really... I'm going to start doing a class on all the prophetic revelations of the coming day of great tribulation that is found from Genesis all the way through Revelation. There's a lot of them that I have never heard anyone minister on. Never heard anyone talk about these things. And I figure it's time with all the nonsense that's going on where people are stealing from men's hearts the hope of the resurrection. Because see, the catching away to me is equal to the resurrection. It's no different from the resurrection. It's one and the same thing. They happen simultaneously. True. And of course, you know, the resurrection began with began 2,000 years ago with the Lord Jesus, but everybody else's day is reserved for one general resurrection. And that's at the time that the Lord Jesus comes with the voice of an archangel and the sound of a trumpet. This is a very important hope to us. It, Paul made it the most important thing that he lived for. Did you hear that? That if, by, that if I by any means might attain unto the resurrection. That sounds like to me that, he that there was one thing that was more important to him than anything else. And that was being a part of the resurrection and making heaven. I mean, people got a lot of ideas about a lot of things that they want to do. I'm going to tell you right now, the one thing you want more than anything else is you want to be in that day. You want to be there on that day in that number. Of hearing the Lord say, my, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's only one way for you to hear the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servant. As that is that you'll find your life in Christ Jesus. And that's not some boring life that leaves you, you know, having some miserable existence. It's the best life that God could possibly ever imagine. It's the best life. It's abundant life. It's the life of God. I mean, tell me that Abraham had a boring life. Give me a break. He walked with God. He had the best life. God raised him up to the highest position. Tell me Joseph had a boring life. He had the best life. God raised him up to the highest position in the earth. Tell me Moses had a boring life. He had a great life. He got to behold the glory of God. I mean, my goodness, Father raised him up to the highest position. Tell me David had a boring life. He had a great life. God took him from a, from a place of taking care of the sheep for his papa to taking care of, uh, of the sheep for the heavenly father. I mean, come on, give me a break. We're talking about the life here. Satan is deceived. People think that it's fun and wonderful and it's a great life to be like Samson with your hair cut off, your eyes plucked out, going round and round grinding meal for the Philistines. That's some great life. To be stressed out of your mind that you grind your teeth all night long. You're all worried about your money, afraid that it's all going to pass away. You, 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 you know, find a, you know, a place to stick it in your pillow and got your gun by you. Trying to protect what little things you got. I mean, come, give me a break. You tell me Satan has not lied to folks to hold them in the stronghold of serving men. And God says you can't serve money in me. You can't serve a career in me. God says you'll love one and hate the other. You'll serve one and despise the other. Look, don't serve mammon. Don't give your life. Don't spend your life on what you can earn and what you can have. Just seek the Lord. Pour all that you have into the kingdom of God. Take care of the widows and the orphans and take care of those that are in affliction. Support the traveling ministries. Be a part of ministry yourself. Support the local church. Those who are preaching the gospel and advancing the things of the Spirit who are, who are set to do the ministry of Jesus. I'm telling you right now, you go to a church, if the ministry of Jesus isn't being revealed, if there's not signs and wonders, if the sick aren't being prayed for and healed, if there's not the, the fire of the Holy Ghost and the expressions of those things that was poured out, 
out in the book of Acts. I'm telling you, you didn't go to church. It was a religious institution. The church is the body of Christ. And wherever Christ Jesus is, his church is there. And wherever Christ Jesus is, he's doing the same things he did yesterday because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's just it. That's the way it is. I won't have religion. I won't have anything but signs, wonders, miracles, demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power, walking on the water, turning the water into wine, seeing the dead raised to life again, the blind eyes open, deaf ears unstopped, diseases cured, people with yokes broken off of them, demon spirits go out of those who are possessed by them, and great joy fills the place. That's church. The rest is religion. And that's heaven. Church is heaven. Paul said church is heaven. Read about it in Hebrews chapter 12, starting verse 22. I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm talking to you about the hope of the resurrection. I'm talking about you putting your heart into the resurrection. The resurrection being more important to you than anything else. I'm talking about the deceiving powers of darkness. Because one of the things that the Lord says is in the last days, here's what's going to happen. People are going to say he's delayed is coming. He's delayed is coming. It's happening now like never before. He's delayed his coming. He's not coming before the tribulation. He's coming after. He's delayed his coming. Yeah. That's exactly the way I read that. People are having faith stolen from their hearts by perverse doctrines that nobody can prove. I like for anybody come sit in front of me. We'll just go scripture by scripture. The, the one who has the most scriptures in the end wins. Proof by proof. I'll take Greek word for Greek word, Hebrew word for Hebrew word, and we'll find out where we stand here. Because there's too many lies going on. People basically running a smoke screen, presenting themselves with some kind of education, some kind of insight. And listen, you're stealing from men the hope of the resurrection. I said you're stealing from men the hope of the resurrection. I'm going to tell you right now, we're supposed to be witnesses for the resurrection, not witnesses against the resurrection. Amen. Give me a break. Furthermore, all these people say that you're going to go through the tribulation. They cannot pinpoint for you any resurrection nor give you hope for it. They all confuse. Well, we're not sure. Well, I am sure. So listen over here. Listen over here. Listen right over here. Don't listen to the person not sure. Listen to somebody who's sure. This is somebody who's got some evidence and some data and some proof for you. Can pinpoint a date and a time as it were. And of course, you know, when I say that loosely, because we know that no man knows the, the hour or the day in which the Lord shall come. And when we're talking about that coming, you know, we're not talking about the second coming. Because we know the day and the hour is pinpointed. The number of days have been numbered out for us. And the times and events have been isolated and given to us with great certainty. By both Daniel and by John. Huh? Geographical events individual uh, personalities, great details have been unveiled. Now, in verse 1 Thessalonians, hallelujah, Pocanosite Alana. I want every one of you just to get overwhelmed by the glory of God here tonight. So much so that I want you to so be able to receive what things God has for you that from this day forward, you live in expectation of the returning of the Lord Jesus. You, we are all, you know what we're supposed to be like? Think about this. Jesus said, we are supposed to be like servants who are waiting for their master to return. We don't know when he's coming, but we're ready, we're watching, we're waiting for him so that when he comes, we're going to be prepared to receive him. But when people have had the, res, the, the, the hope of the resurrection stolen from their hearts, then they've lost that faith, they've lost that disposition, they've lost that, that in commitment that we're supposed to have that the Lord Jesus described concerning his servants that are continually waiting and watching that they might be counted worthy to escape all these things which should come upon the, the world and stand before the Son of Man. That's what Jesus said. And he said that in context of the tribulation. That's what Jesus said. Hallelujah. That's me. Huh? Yep. I'm watching, I'm waiting on him that I might be counted worthy to escape all these things that should come upon the earth and stand before the Son of Man because he's going to be in heaven, yeah. not on earth. He's going to be in heaven. I'm going to be with him. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 4, I'm going to get this here in a second. I'm going to start in verse 14 because this is, what, this is where we're at. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe it? I mean, get the Easter eggs out of it. Help us, Lord. Because the Easter eggs don't have anything to do with it. Unfortunately, when they were worshiping the goddess Diana, they painted eggs and hid them so that people could go find them in an act of worship of her. She's also known as, known as Esther or Easter. Unfortunately. Now, in the Hebrew custom at Passover, the Aphekumen was hid, which is the hidden manna. Today, even in this, this, this Passover celebration, the hidden manna, part of the bread of Passover was hidden, and the kids had to go try to find it. And whoever found it got a prize. And they think it's, they, and, and they were actually celebrating going through an event that actually spoke of Jesus Christ coming, the hidden manna being revealed. Now, I would like for us to be able to do that, but you know what? There's only so many battles a person can fight. So I'm going to let people paint their Easter eggs. I'm going to pray a sanctification prayer over them and go look for them because I'm going to tell you right now, false doctrine and, and damnable heresies go far deeper than that within the ordinary traditions of the church. I'm not going to go into that either tonight because I'm over here on 1 Thessalonians over here. If you believe that Christ died and rose again, do you believe that? Yes. Hallelujah. Even so, them which are already dead in Jesus, God will bring with him. Isn't that beautiful? Even so, those who are asleep, the Lord, uh, you know, the Lord just kind of reduces death that way. He's not talking about a soul sleep because he, when, you know, when um, Jairus' daughter had died, Jesus just talks about it like this. He says, she's not dead, she sleeps. She sleeps. When Lazarus died, he said, he's not dead, he's sleeping. We're going to go wake him up. Hey, isn't that a nice way to deal with those who are dead? I'm going to wake them up. But if you're thinking, oh, now they've been starved of oxygen for more than five minutes and jelly-brained and, you know, and they, you know, and they start thinking all the physiological things and all the impossibilities and turn into Dr. Frankenstein while you're supposed to be standing there representing Jesus Christ. I mean, nothing's going to happen. You're going to be defeated before you even get started. People are all up in their head. But if you understand it the way that God, the miracle that God has set up for us and you just wake people up, my goodness, I want you to be able to walk into a revelation and interaction with the Lord Jesus Christ where you can see it in the simplicity uh, uh, of how he sees it, that you can understand the miracle that, he, that is easily performed by him through you. That ain't going to happen without relationship. Spend some time with them. People have had upsets. They've had disappointments. They've had tragedies in their lives. They've had, you know, discouraging events and They've allowed it to alter their faith, alter what they're willing to believe for. Don't allow your circumstance to change your disposition about the Word of God. Listen to me. Don't you allow the events around you and the failures around you to change your opinion about what God says. Step up and believe more radically than you did before. Huh? I'm telling you right now, if I was a blind man, I'd be walking, walking around trying to find somebody blind to pray for. <laughs> Huh? Hallelujah. I'm not going to change the word. We don't preach ourselves. We preach Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. Right. I love Bokash. I'll be praying for myself. Oh, God, open up my eyes. But we're looking around for somebody to pray for as well because the Lord told us to go do that. That's what he told us to go do. That's what he said. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He made it a general statement. It's not dressed just to the 12. I know that there's certain things that people can just argue that it was just, Jesus just, just was talking to the 12. But I'm going to tell you right now what he said to the 12, he said to everybody. And then there's more, there's more to it than that because he made uh, addresses that clearly was to the general public. These signs shall follow them that believe. These miracles will accompany those who believe. In my name they'll cast out devils. Hallelujah. They'll speak with new tongues. Praise God. Uh, <laughs> Those are tongues that have never been heard before. They'll take up serpents. They drink any deadly thing that should not hurt them. Praise God. They'll lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Period. Amen. Amen. My job is to lay hands on the sick. It's God's job for them to recover. My job is done when I've laid the hands on the sick 
You listen, that's your job. People go, you try to go beyond the place of their position and authority. Try to step into the, you know, do, doing the things that, that the Lord said he would take care of. He, there's things that God's got to work out about people. There's unbelief. There's strongholds. There's, there's hindering spirits. There's all kinds of issues going on that can explain why sometimes people don't get healed. Satan is a, re Satan is a re rebel. The atmosphere of faith is important for healing and miracles. I mean, because I'm telling you, listen, I, will, I heard about all the great revivals and where I was raised in a home of a, of a revivalist where it's like things didn't start breaking up in six, eight, 12 weeks into the meetings. Because an atmosphere of faith has got to be created. Look at Jesus in the atmosphere of Nazareth. There's nobody who had the power of God revealed in his life like Jesus did. But in Nazareth, he could do no mighty works. Because of why? Unbelief. It was an atmosphere of unbelief. The mighty works that Jesus did always happened where people were just, they were just desperate. They were just needy. They just were willing to, with total abandonment, believe, spend all that she can, groove the worst, said in her heart, if I could just but touch the end of his garment, I know I'd be made perfectly whole. And look at the atmosphere of faith. Great crowds were around and pressing against him. Huh? He's on his way to the Jairus house, one of the <coughs> rulers of the synagogue, because the faith was still all the time high. We know that Jesus can, can heal anything and heal anyone and heal anybody. And they bring Jairus news that his daughter is dead. <clears throat> said, trouble not the master, your daughter is dead. Jesus turned to him and said, fear not, only believe. The atmosphere of faith is so vital. Faith is important, absolutely essential in every dimension of our walk with God and service of God. And here we're living in a day that's grown, that is that much closer to the advancement of, of the state of absolute apostasy and the great falling away. And Satan fights more against the model of the church and the manifestation of the ministry of Jesus than ever before. It never, it is no, no time like this that we need more people that will rise up and give themselves to the glorious church. Those things which Jesus did and is now doing in this moment in time can be manifested so that people can see who he is and understand that the living God is faithful concerning everything that he said. He's not going to do anything unless he does it pretty much through you and me. That's the way he set up the program, through his church. He sent us to go on his behalf. He said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth and I'm going to come down and do it all, so sit back and relax. Is that what the scripture says? Is that what Matthew chapter 28 verse 17 says? No. He just didn't say that. Jesus didn't say, all, have, all power, all authority is given me in heaven and earth. Don't do anything. I'm going to take care of it all. I'll have a few sovereign moves every once in a while and everybody get a lot of rain, refreshing, and then, you know. He said that. He said, all, he, all, he said, all authority is given me in heaven and earth. Go. You go. You go. Go. Go everywhere. Preach the gospel. Baptize nations. He, I mean, I'm talking, take it up another notch. Not just baptize individuals. To baptize nations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's so many nations open to me right now. All I'm saying is, Lord, I don't want to do anything. I have, I, I have zero ambition in God. Zero ambition. I want not to do nothing of myself. I have no ambition whatsoever. I don't want to do anything unless Father absolutely makes me to know that I'm supposed to do it. Because I've got a job to do right now. I'm very happy doing exactly what God tells me to do. Somebody said, well... Don't you like it better being up in front of those big crowds? And no, no, not, a, not really. I, I love seeing people come in the kingdom. I love seeing signs, wonders, miracles. What I love and I'm excited about doing is doing the will of the Father. I want to do what, he, what he's going to describe for me to do, not what some, of, some ideas I've created in my mind to do. And I'll tell you right now, when we give our heart wholly to serve the Lord, he's going to open up doors for us. I'm telling you right now, he's going to send us to the nations. That's what he's going to do. 
Hallelujah. We want to go at his appointed time under his mandate, under his instruction, under his divine grace, doing it his way. And in the meantime, I'll stand here and worship him with all of my heart. And I'm going to keep him first. I'm going to do what's right in his sight. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get into a place of, of praying and seeking his face. I'm going to be faithful to him, the things that he's given me to do. I'm going to do the work of an evangelist. I'm going to do the work of a pastor. I'm going to do the work of a minister every day. I'm going to serve him with all my heart, my soul, my strength. And I'm going to watch as God takes me and leads me wherever he wants me to go. Amen. Amen. And this is what we believe God for you. You don't need to be stressed out about nothing. I don't want to do nothing. I'm happy to go follow cows around. I like cows. I like living in the country. That's where I'm comfortable. I fit right in, man. I get, I'm telling you right now, I get my hat on, my boots on, huh? get my bandana around my neck. I'm telling you, give me my horse. Watch out. I'm happy. Give me that shovel. I can go to dig and put me on that tractor. Watch out. I'm having a good time, man. Leave me alone. We'll get this whole work, we'll get all the work done by myself because I, I enjoy every minute of it. I like that stuff. But that's not what the Lord's called me to do. I mean, I can't go do that with my life. Here's what I'm doing with my life. I'm doing what Papa told me to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he lets me go out and visit the cows because he's also given me a vision to be able to help people, orphanages that are every day, every week, every month, every year running out of food, more and more food shortage, greater now than it's ever been, is continuing to get worse and creating sustainability in orphanages and ministry and commerce among the, the ministries, the orphanages, the churches that are going to be raised up in the third world nations that are, God has right now his heart directed towards like North Korea and I, Kashmir and I can name a whole list. My goodness, when they come into the kingdom, we want to have the right kind of plan and the right kind of infrastructure to see sustainability and see commerce built between the churches. Hallelujah. When, they, when everybody's going to come to them for food, and God's going to promote them. The church going to be the head and not the tail. They'll lend to many nations and not borrow. I'm believing God for that. I'm moving in that direction. I'm taking a hold of the whole vision, not part of it. I'm not saying somehow it can't happen. I'm a labor. I'm a labor. Whether I only get to be a part of building some of the foundation does not matter. I'm a labor. And God's going to put it in the next person's heart, the next person's heart, the next person's heart until ultimately it is fulfilled vision. I'm telling you right now, there is going to be a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost before there comes a great falling away. I'm telling you, God, there, won't be, there won't be any harvest left. God is going to raise up an army and a fire will burn before them. And though it be like a garden of Eden, it will become like a desolate wilderness because everything, everything will be burned up with the fire of God's glory brought into this wonderful moving of the spirit of the living God brought it into the kingdom and then, the, then of course, you know after that's done there will be a sorting out and unfortunately there will be ultimately a great falling away but there's a very important word that Jesus ministered and he said will there be any faith when the son of man comes I'm watching for the son of man coming I'm waiting for the son of man well, when Jesus said that, I know he was talking about where well, I feel very strongly in the context in which he said it, that he was talking about when he comes with ten thousands of the saints to execute judgment upon all the ungodly for their ungodly deeds which they ungodly committed. When he comes from Bozrah with his garments dipped in blood, trampling out the grapes of wrath, going to the, to the valley of Megiddo to execute judgment against the nations of the earth that come up to make war against God and his anointed. Pretty radical stuff, isn't it? To think that this whole earth and everything that we know about the culture and the family and the nations of this earth will ultimately, are ultimately gravitating towards and will ultimately end up voluntarily worshiping Satan. It's a pretty radical thought, isn't it? It's not too radical when you look around and see the state of affairs as it is right now. First Thessalonians chapter 4, for... If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then we also which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Listen to this. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive, we. He didn't say you. You see that? Paul believed he was in the number of those who were going to be alive and remain. We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. 
For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, when, then we which are alive and remain. There he goes again. We which are alive and remain. To say, you guys that are alive and are remaining. He says, we. Paul believed he was going to be around. He didn't, he didn't know the day, but he was expecting a soon, re a soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He never thought to die. <laughs> Hallelujah. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. There it is. There's that word. Our peso. To be caught up. Somebody said it's not in the Bible. There it is. Go ahead and ca caught up was translated in the Latin. Oh, oh, raptu, which is where we get the word rapture from. Somebody said it's not in the Bible. Yes, it is in the Bible. The transliteration was rapture. From this particular word, you're caught up. It is in the Bible. I heard somebody say on the, 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 on the television the other night, says, why would you believe in something that's not in the Bible? Well, I totally agree with that. But he was saying, why would you believe in the rapture when it's not in the Bible? Give me a break. It is in the Bible. It's caught up. We're going to be caught up to be with the Lord. He didn't say, gee, look, looky here. Don't put in here what Paul didn't say. He didn't say, we're going, to be, we're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we ever will be with the Lord. Jesus said, I go away to prepare a place for you, and I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be there with me. Paul didn't say that we're going to be caught up to be with the Lord, to just turn right back around and come down and fight the battle of Armageddon. He didn't say we're going to be caught up to be with the Lord to turn right back around and come rule and reign on the earth. He didn't see. He didn't teach that. Paul, taught, Paul believed in the marriage supper of the Lamb because he read Revelation too. Well, he didn't read it from John. You know what I mean. He received abundance of revelation. He was caught up in the heaven, heard things that were not lawful to be uttered. He knew, what was, he knew what was going to take place. He was a part of those in the inner circle who was, had the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ revealed to him. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to get my electronics. I'm preaching these things to you because I want the faith of it to be in you. I want you to go to bed tonight expecting a trumpet of the Lord to sound before you wake up. I want you to walk through the day tomorrow being as those who are waiting on their master that's going to return. You don't know when he's going to come, but when he comes, you're going to be ready to minister to him. Those who are always looking for him. Lift up your head, your redemption draws nigh. Huh? Being, having, having these words of the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ being a comfort to your heart and not something to argue about. So, so turn in your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Then here in a few minutes, I'm going to serve you some communion. Of course, I'm serving you some communion right now. I'm eating the flesh and drinking the blood right now as I speak. Hallelujah. I got a number of verses of scripture I want to read to you here, but I'm going to go ahead and start over here in verse 51. Behold, I'll show you a mystery. Boy, we could underline that, couldn't we? Mystery 
And behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or we shall not all die. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, you know, in the tribulation, the only people that are sealed and protected from death and from the plagues is 144,000, 12,000 virtuous men who've not known women from the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? So, if the church were in the tribulation, they didn't get sealed. And that's weird. And that's just unexplainable and nonsense to begin with because the church is not, even feet, is not even pictured in the tribulation at all from Revelation chapter 4 to Revelation chapter 19. I want you to get that. It's not even pictured. It's all about Israel. It's all Old Testament terminology from Revelation chapter 4 to Revelation chapter 19. Why do people think it's just so spectacular and, and so super Christian to believe in going through the tribulation? Why, if you believe in the catching away, are you like some kind of weak, frightful Christian? Do I look weak and frightful? Ha, 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 ha. is the hope of the resurrection that we speak of here. Behold, I show you a mystery. You ready? We should not all sleep, but we should be changed in a moment in the blinking of an eye at the last trump. For the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. There he is again. There he is again. Dead's got to be raised incorruptible. We which are alive and remain, we're going to be changed. He's not looking for no antichrist. He's not looking for no tribulation. He's looking for the event of the catching away. I'm going to do what Paul did. I'm not looking for no tribulation. I'm not looking for no antichrist. I'm looking for the catching away. I'm not preparing for the mark of the beast. I'm preparing for a great revival that nations will have the witness of the Lord Jesus Christ that all nations will have this gospel preached unto them. Then the end shall come. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise His holy name forevermore. For this corruptible must put on corruptible, the incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. Now I want to back up quickly. Let's, let's look at a couple of verses of Scripture here. Back all the way up to verse 21. In verse 20, Paul says, and, and you know, because Paul's opening up the whole 1 Corinthians chapter 15, He's just dealing with, he's dealing with the resurrection. He's dealing with the fact that Jesus was, died for our sins. That's how he opens it up. He was buried and was raised on the third day. And then what he does is he goes through everybody who saw Jesus. He numbers them all the way through to verse 10. He goes to, from Peter, calling him Cephas, to the 500 to the twelve, to James. He's also to me as one born out of due season. He, he, he's talking about those who saw Jesus in the resurrection. Helping everybody understand if you don't believe in the resurrection, if you don't believe in the resurrection, then Jesus didn't raise from the dead. But because Jesus raised from the dead, there is a resurrection, both of the just and the unjust. Something that was taught not only here in the New Testament at the time of the ministry of Jesus, but it was taught in the Old Testament. Something that's been understood among the people of God since the very beginning. And so he says, but now is Christ risen from the dead <laughs> and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man also the resurrection of the dead. Now once you understand, once you, I just want you to grab a hold of that. We follow in his footsteps. And if I'm taking the position of following in his footsteps, when Jesus was raised up from the dead, where did he go? I'll say this again. When Jesus was raised up from the dead, where did he go? Into heaven. That's not a trick question. Are you with me? When Jesus was raised up from the dead, where did he go? Into heaven. And he's been there for 2,000 years. When you raised up from the dead, guess where are you going to go? 
heaven, not to the bad, not to the battle of Armageddon. You're going to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus went away to prepare a place for us, to where he is. He said, in my father's house, there's many mansions. I'm going to go to father's house. I'm going to raise up from the dead and go to father's house. I don't know where you're going. I'm going to father's house. And I want you to have the hope of going to father's house. I want you to have the hope of going into the presence of the living God to forever live before him. I don't know how it's all going to work out. How that the Lord is going to rule over this earth and have the 12 apostles ruling the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 tribes of Israel ruling over the nations of the earth. I don't know where all we fit on in that. But I know that he makes us priests and kings who will reign with them a thousand years. But I'd probably be reigning from heaven. I mean father's house. You want to be on earth? That's, I don't know. I'm going to be in heaven. I'm being heaven. I'm being heaven. Hallelujah. Somebody said they want to be a part of the demolition team. The Lord's going to change it all with the breath of his nostrils. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look, at the end of the tribulation, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. The Lord, the old will pass away. The Lord will make a new heaven and a new earth. Then Father's house is going to come down to earth. I'm sure I'll be there then. Because I'm going, Father's house! Listen up. I'm headed to Father's house. I'm going to Father's house. Right now, my work on earth, is, I'm engaged in my work on earth. And my work on earth is that which is ordained by the Lord Jesus Christ to go everywhere to conquer and to subdue in his stead. But the heavens must receive him until the restoration of all things. He's going to sit down and be seated at the Father's right hand until everything is subject unto him. Everything is subject to him. Then Father's going to come. That's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Then Father shall be accepted. Hallelujah. And I know that that extends over into the millennial reign of Christ. I'm going to be Father's house. I'm going to be Father's house. I'm going to be Father's house. I'm going to be with Father. Jesus came so that the Father might be revealed to you and to me. I'm going to be the Father. And Jesus wants it that way, and Father wants that way, and you should want it that way too. You're going to be Father's house. Amen. In my Father's house are many mansions, are many dwelling places. Hallelujah. If it were not so, I would tell you, I'd go away to prepare a place for you so that where I am, where is he at right now? Where was he talking about being? In Father's house, in a heavenly realm, in a place that is separated from this earthly realm. God, the new Jerusalem, the mother of us all, is not coming down out of heaven into the earth until the end of the thousand-year reign of Christ. Until a new heaven and a new earth is created, until every wickedness and every rebellion is completely subdued and put under, and there can never be any rebellion ever again. There'll be only righteousness. Sin will be no more. And I saw the bride of Christ coming down out of heaven. I saw the new Jerusalem. I saw come down out of heaven like a bride prepared, adorned for her husband. Whew. Don't be there. It's the camp of the saints. Don't be there. Hallelujah. Be Father's house. Bombs to cut on a per day. So if I said, well, we've got to rule with them for a thousand years. Yeah, that's true. But I'm going to be Father's house. Hallelujah. You're going to be Father's house. Father, I ask you to give me an anointing. I ask you, Father, for a special anointing to break the strongholds of all these people and all these ministers and ministries who tried to take away the hope of the resurrection from your people in the earth today. I ask you to give me a special anointing, oh God. Father, I ask you for a fiery anointing. I ask you for an authority by the Spirit to break off that stronghold in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection from the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall be made alive. 
That's both the inward resurrection and the outward resurrection. And until you get the inward resurrection, you have no hope for a good out, out, a turnout in the physical resurrection. There are two resurrections. There's the resurrection of the righteous and there's the resurrection of the unrighteous. The resurrection of the righteous happens before Christ Jesus sets up his reign wherein he reigns for a thousand years and rules with a rod of iron subduing the nations. The second resurrection or the resurrection of the dead, the resurrection of the, of the wicked, the unjust, happens at the end of the thousand years, just be, right at the time that the Lord creates a new heaven and new earth and brings a finality to all rebellion and all sin and all wickedness and death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. Everything will give up the dead. And that everybody in that resurrection will stand before the great white throne judgment of God. They'll stand before God. Scripture said heaven and earth will flee away from his presence, but they will not be able to find a place to hide. Uh, because it's now time that the finality of it all, even hell will give up the dead that are in it. Mm -mm -mm. Let me just read this to you. Just it's beautiful hope. Beginning in verse 42, same chapter. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. If I ever do your funeral. This is what, how I preach. So you know, seeing as you're not going to be there, you understand why I'm in ministry. <laughs> I'll say, let my, right, let, my right, let my death be, let my end or my death be as their death, the death of the righteous. And I'll say, it is sown in resurrection. It is sown a corruptible body, but God's going to raise it up incorruptible. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is sown in dishonor and it's raised up in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised up in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised up a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And look at Jesus' spiritual body. Jesus' spiritual body was able to be handled by men. Jesus' spiritual body was able to pass through walls. Jesus' spiritual body was able to eat fish and bread. Jesus' spirit, Jesus spiritual body is a physical heavenly realm body that's immortal and incorruptible. Just go and read about all the things about what Jesus did after that he was raised up from the dead and seen of many brethren. About 500. Paul says at the beginning of this epistle. Now let me show you one other thing before we have communion. I'm going to show you one other thing that maybe, maybe you didn't know anything about. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 quickly. I'm talking to you about another body. You ready for another body? Huh? Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter, 15, chapter 5. You there? We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. I got a house not made with hands in heaven right now. Then I'm going to slip. If I die, if I were to die right now, I'm going to slip into that tabernacle and wait for the resurrection of my earthly body. It's on a natural body, raised incorruptible. We can't even really speak too much about these things because we don't really know. But we're not going to be, we're not going to be naked. We will be closed upon. They don't even understand all of this. It's just, but it's just beautiful. It's amazing. Our Father, our Father's dressing us up. How He's setting, setting us up. See, to die is to be present with the Lord. There is not going to be any absence from interaction with God. I will not have one interrupted moment of consciousness from this life into the next, and neither will you. 
I tell you, one moment after you die, if you find yourself in a waiting room, you're in trouble. One moment after you die, if you start passing through a tunnel that's dark with light at the end of it, you are in trouble. You're not going to end up good. All that's nonsense. I tell you right now, as soon as you step out of this body, you should be seeing Jesus, angels of the Lord. He's going to come and receive you unto himself. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The angels came and angels came and got, hallelujah. Angels came and got Lazarus. I mean, you know what? That's the only way to go. That's some dark tunnel waiting room stuff. Please. Everybody I ever heard about went through some dark tunnel, saw the light at the end of the tunnel, and were in the waiting room. My goodness, they were just at one stop just before hell. It's not a good thing. No. I don't want anybody to end up in a waiting room when you leave here, when you breathe out your last breath. How many of you are ready to go? How many of you are ready to die? How many are ready to leave this life? You ready to go right now? The Lord sees your hand up. We're ready to step out of this life into the next. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Father, you see every hand that's lifted up right now in this place. Lord, you're the one who makes, causes truth to exist in the inward heart. You know where every person stands before you right now. Lord, we thank you that you come and that you cause this floodlight of heaven to shine upon our soul. That you search out everything about our life, oh God. That you make everything known. You bring every hidden thing to light. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that each person in this place will judge themselves. That every person in this place tonight will find themselves in Christ, oh Lord. That they'll find themselves in the salvation that you brought for us, that you purchased for us at Calvary. Father, as we begin to take, partake of this wonderful element of your de death, burial, and resurrection, this wonderful element of communion and fellowship with you, of partaking of your body and of your blood, that every person will have examined themselves and that no one will eat or drink unworthily in this place, but they will recognize that they are eating and drinking life, resurrection life, as we fellowship with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Paul says, for in this we groan earnestly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Now, there is a possibility that Paul was speaking of him being changed in a moment, in the blinking of an eye. I don't see him believing anything else. I don't see him believing that he was going to die. He heard Jesus and and expected the imminent return of the Lord Jesus. There's a possibility that that's what he's talking about here. But either way, dear people, I want you to see something so glorious and something so eternal and something so wonderful purchased for you by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to ask every one of you, what value are you going to put on that? All you folks that want to go work real hard all day and make a bunch of money, how much are you going to pay for your tabernacle in heaven? Because I'm telling you right now, it's not got a price tag on it. It's not for sale. You can't, I don't care if you got $10 trillion. You can't afford this tabernacle. All your money is vain, is foolish. All your profiting is nothing. Men, men call it responsibility. It's not responsibility. Your responsibility is first and foremost to God, not to man and not to yourself. Besides that, the Lord saying, says, having food and clothing, therewith be content. That's what the Lord says. He said, in fact, lay not up for yourself treasures on earth. 
You don't need a theologian to explain that. Lay not up for yourself treasures on earth. Lay up treasures in heaven. I mean, we going wide open. We clawing, scratching, fighting, moving in every way we can to pull together every penny that we can to finance the things that the Lord has placed in our heart to do in the kingdom of God that we know, though nobody, it doesn't matter if anybody else could even get it. We know what we're doing. We know our divine assignment. We know what we're pressing in for. And Father will make it manifest. Amen. It's hard for, it's hard for anybody to wrap around their head around the big visions of God. Even the person who gets the big vision and the call and God puts it on the inside of them and gives them the ability to run with the thing. It's hard for them to even comprehend it. They got to walk it out one step at a time. You know, much less for anybody else to get it. It's a heavenly revelation. But when you begin to start sowing into these things, when your heart begins to participate with the things of the Spirit, you start getting it. When all of a sudden it becomes big on, your, on the inside of you to live out the purposes and the call and the election of God for your life. When all of a sudden you begin to see the nations of the earth, your responsibility. When you begin to see the 450 million orphans and the number growing that could all be brought into the kingdom should there be the ability to reach them. I knew when we uh, went into Afghanistan, I knew, that, I knew a person who was on the provisional government board, a, a medical doctor who was also in government in Cairo, Egypt. She was on the provisional board of Afghanistan. She said, all you need is a hundred million dollar grant. Go into Afghanistan with a hundred million dollar grant. Go and do hospitals, do, go and do clinics, do schools, do orphanages, take care of the widows and take care of the old people and take care of the orphans. And Al-Qaeda will let you do whatever you want to do. They won't touch you. You can have everybody you want. I said, oh, Lord, and it was 19, what was that? It was uh, 2003. I said, Lord, the next time this happens, I don't want to be found not having the finances to do something on a significant level. And we're going to see a lot of it. And we're going to see more open doors and more opportunities yeah. than just that. We've got to be prepared. Yeah. There's a great harvest. I mean, the, look, the, 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 the harvest is plenteous. Mm -hmm. It's the labors are few. And I know that if we give ourselves to these divine purposes, if we give ourselves to the call of God, and we begin to participate with those things which He's placed within our life to do, we move in His faith, move in His Word, preach His Word, not our own Word, then we're, we're going to step into all the things that that he's purposed and empowered us to do. I, I don't want to teach anything that's not his word because I know if I can start teaching things that are not his word, that I'm going to be held back from going all the way with him. I've watched a lot of people. They've been flashing the pans or just lasted for 5, 10, 15 years and then they were gone. Their ministries were glorious for 5, 10, 15 years and then became shambles. I don't want, I'm not, I don't want to repeat that. I want to be like Jesus. He's got an, ever, he's got an everlasting ministry. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So cold on my monobolosity. And he's given us that, he's given us the privilege to share in his ministry. There's nothing we can't do. If we get our heart right, if we put our, if our value system becomes a heavenly value system instead of an earthly one. There's, I said there's nothing that we can't do if our, if our value system become a heavenly one instead of an earthly one. You know, how many, you know how many young men right now and young women could actually be saved from going into reformatories? Right now, could be saved if somebody was organized, step up and say, I'll take care of them. I have a home for them. 
You know how many people are being thrown away on a daily basis, just thrown away because we're too busy pursuing our own interests, too busy taking care of our own stuff? We're not going to do that around here. We're not going to do that. You're going to seek God until you get a vision from heaven. I'm, grab, I'm, I'm grabbing my own things in the spirit. I was being told the other day about an orphanage. got a thousand orphans in it. It's a group, small group in Uganda, Africa. I have a thousand orphan, orphans in five locations, I think it is. And they went for a long period of time with no food. All the kids were just, they didn't have no food. And that's repeated over and over and over again. What are you going to do, shrug your shoulders? Not me, I'm going to hit my knees. So I'll do something about that. If it comes to my hearing, I'm responsible. And now you're responsible because I just said it's in your hearing. And I praise God for what Heather is doing and putting together um, an orphan, orphan campaign to raise finances for the orphans that we're supporting right now. Sudeep just sent me a, an email, said, thank you so much, Pastor Mark, for what you're doing. You saw the uh, videos that Elizabeth put together for the orphanage. We have over a thousand orphanages that we're connected with. Um, In, in Nepal. And we're, we're, we're going to start with a few. I praise the Lord for what? Allie and Josh were doing, because Allie just was sitting here one night in, in a meeting. She just got here with the get to faith. She says, I'm going to raise finances for the Mission Training Center because she saw it. She sees it. She sees what it will do. I praise God for people who are getting behind these things and saying, look, we, got, we have to champion, we have to champion the purposes of God and the call of God to reach the lost. We've got we to be part of meeting the immediate need now and the long-term need that's a, in, in, a, in a sustainable way. And what does it cost? Everything. For me, for my wife and I, we said, Lord, all our hopes in you, all of our desires in you, you can have everything about our life. Whatever you want. And just say it to him on a daily basis. You want the house? We don't need the house. Whatever you want us to do. However you want us to do it. Of course, we know that the Lord's going to take care of us because he's promised to take good care of us as we seek him. We just look at all the vast need that is out there. Say, Lord, how can we do this in a more effective way? Because I'm going to sell all I have, and it's going to be a drop in the bucket for the need. <clears throat> what you and I are going to have to do is we're going to have to step into a realm of faith in God that will only be a reality because we begin to move in obedience to do what He's called us to do. We do it with all of our heart. Cost us sleep cost us a lot, a lot of things physically. But we can do this. Father, we praise you. We praise you. We thank you that you rose up from the dead. <clears throat> that we might be raised up together with you. We thank you for the hope of the resurrection. We, I, Father, I thank you that tonight every person in this place has a burning vision within their life, a faith within their life of looking for and waiting unto that glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that every person in this place
from day, this day forward will hasten to and put their whole heart into the glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. That every person will faithfully labor with the things that you've given them, whatever measure of faith that they're functioning in right now, to be used by you in whatever role, whatever part that they're, ever, they're able to play, to go everywhere preaching this gospel, to see as many people come into the kingdom. Lord, we just thank you that little Naomi is de dedicated and devoted to going everywhere preaching the gospel in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you're going to use us this year in many nations yes. of the earth. Amen. Father, we thank you that you're going to open up doors and you're, you're going to make, you're going to bring great provision for in the areas of the, the, the ministries that you've hooked us up with, both here in the United States of America and throughout the nations of the earth, that you're going to, you're going to enlarge that. Father, I pray that every person in this place will not just see their life, spent at their workplace or a vision for what they're going to do with themselves here upon this earth living out their natural life but every single soul in this place will have a heavenly vision and see themselves doing the things oh god that you've assigned us to do in your stead living out your life right now hallelujah Hallelujah. Daniel, I want you to help Geneva over there. Pour out. Why don't you bring that table and just kind of just pick it up. Just set it long ways right here because I'm going to have people come up and just receive here in just a few minutes. Paul received directly from the Lord this wonderful table of communion. We don't see Paul so much keeping any kind of quote-unquote Jewish tradition. You see all these different things, people saying, well, if you speak in Hebrew, you got more of anointing. That's crazy. I know people who can show you every stem of every verb or actually recite every stem of every verb in the Hebrew Bible, and they don't have any anointing at all. They don't even believe in Jesus. And then talk about the five cups of Passover. There's no such thing as five cups of Passover. That's a Roman mill. It's nothing to do with Jew, Jewish tradition. There's all these ideas and all these crazy notions. Paul said, as I received from the Lord, I gave it to you. How that Jesus was, in the night that he was betrayed, took bread and broke it. And gave it to them and said, eat, this is my body. Huh? There's not all this other stuff going on. Not all these other traditions. I mean, if people go searching through, they think that they're going to discover some, you know, magical thing in some liturgy that the, that the Jews did. If we bring it back, then all of a sudden we're going to have some great move of God. It ain't going to happen that way. All happens through Jesus. Huh. Besides that, you've got to sort through Romanism and Hellenism. I mean, with a capital H-E-L-L. -L. Hellenism. <laughs> Another way to talk about the Greek culture, in case you didn't know. Try to find out what they did on the night of Passover. I know what they did on the night of Passover. I can go read on the night of Passover what they did. I mean, it's a sad thing. It's one of the great tragedies of the King James that somehow... Easter was put in the Bible in Acts 12 for Passover. Jesus is our Passover lamb. He was sacrificed at the time of the offering up of the Passover lamb. <laughs> on, the, on the night of Passover, what they did was they sat down and they ate some lamb. And they had unleavened bread. All the leaven, all the chametz was moved out of the house. All that leaven, which represents sin, was moved out of the house, was cleaned out. And God says, let there be no leaven among you. There can't be any sin. If you believe that just because you called upon the name of the Lord that you're going to go to heaven no matter what you do, that's a demon doctrine. 
not even a doctrine of men. It's a demon doctrine. And I don't care it, who, 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 what person, whether it was Calvin or whoever else, or Augustine, it doesn't matter. It's a demon doctrine. It, it snares people to believe that they can live like the devil, that they don't have to change and they're going to be right. That's why it's a demon doctrine. See, a demon doctrine will keep you out of heaven. Doctrines of men will keep you from moving with God. Demon doctrines will keep you out of heaven. If you believe that just because you called upon the name of the Lord Jesus and that you're saved and now you're always saved, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter how much sin is in your life, that is so foreign to the scripture. It so defies the word of God that you have to be deceived believing a philosophical ideology of men to... Just to... to Align yourself with that to subscribe to it. I break the power of that thing right now in Jesus' name. And then what you're going to do is you're going to end up eating and drinking damnation because you eat and drink damnation to your soul, taking the body and blood of Jesus Christ unworthily because you won't have a repentant heart about sin and your iniquity in your heart. The scripture says, if you regard sin in your heart, it means you, 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 you know what's going on in your life, and you're not going to change. You don't want to do anything about it. You regard it. You like it. You want it. And I'm just tell you right now. You are absolutely in a position before God of wrath. You cannot regard iniquity in your heart tonight. The Lord has made it so easy for us to be cleansed from our sins. He so made it so easy for us to be washed in the blood. He's made it so easy. For us to get right, have a right heart, have a right instinct, have a right nature. He gave us the Holy Ghost, Spirit of Holiness. Hallelujah. Tonight, hold on to no iniquity, hold on to no sin. Tell Father you just want His ways. You want to do what it is He's doing. He's not doing any sin. Praise God. Wouldn't it be terrible if God was a sinner? Because probably more in the morning you wake up hating you. So he's not going to keep any promise or any covenant. He's not a sinner. He's righteous and holy in all his work. There's nothing but love there. There's nothing but goodness there. There's nothing but mercy and long-suffering and graciousness. He's full of truth and goodness and will always be that way. Praise God. That's why we praise him because he's worthy of praise because that's who he is. He's God and he changes not. He's not like men. He keeps covenant. Oh, mama, mama, he's sipping and mama, mama, and he's come and made a way for us to be just like him. I'm gonna say this before I talk about this in communion. I'm gonna say this: on that day, people are going to discover that the most important thing to the Father is how you kept covenant, how you loved one another. On that day, the Lord will bring every person into question. The most important thing to Him will be how well you maintained love in the relationships that He brought in your life. Every person that God brought into your life, He brought into your life for a purpose. And you have a responsibility to everybody who's come into your life. Maybe there's people, there's people right now, they don't want to be anywhere near me. They don't like me at all. But I love them. I'm willing to just receive them back and happy to see them. We'll keep them heart right. Right now, Look around you. Make sure that you don't break relationship. Make sure you don't break covenant. Make sure that you don't have an evil nature that despises men and are willing to be enemies with those who you were once friends with. That's an evil nature. That's not a divine nature. That's a demonic instinct, not a Holy Ghost instinct. I want you to understand the most important thing is that you don't hold unforgiveness in your heart. That when you come and eat and drink this, these symbols of mercy and forgiveness, that you're not holding in your heart unforgiveness towards anybody else. Huh. That's a stronghold. You be eating and drinking the blood and the body of Jesus Christ unworthily. So I want to, rather than me just quoting this, I want everybody to open up your Bibles with me. To 1 Corinthians chapter 11.
This will actually be the first communion we've had in this building. I've been trying to have communion. I was going to have communion on Wednesday night. The Lord did other wonderful things. Of course, I had communion. We had communion. We served communion. It was just unseen spiritual communion. It was a communion of fellowship with Him. It's what these symbols represent. Some of you think it's just their symbols. No, no, no. He said, He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood is He that dwells in me to abide in Jesus, to, to have your communion and your union and your fellowship with Him. Hallelujah. Ah, and this just represents it. This just represents this. This is the Passover supper. Tonight, if you have sickness in your body or any disease in your body or any torment in your mind or any harassment going on in your life, I'm going to tell you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, when you receive the elements of the supper tonight, I want you to receive that wonderful healing flow that is there. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The Lord Jesus Christ purchased our healing by the stripes which he bore. That's why in that night that they had Passover communion, everybody was healed. There was not one sick or feeble one among them. Imagine how wonderful it was to be there. God's people well taken care of. Their clothes did, for 40 years in the desert, their clothes did not wear out. Their shoes did not wear out. Their feet did not swell. Such Holy Ghost provision, even for a bunch of stiff neck folks, even for a church that didn't know how to shout. Father's amazing. Father's amazing. I hope you're not in a hurry to go anywhere. So, kidana mama man de sepre be pa gli stere da dana di tu. Sire mama man angeli sepra mama un dolo ko sepre va fatta la vita. Oh, bro patana ne gila la manda lo sempre be becchi di sara no no malo do patari. People tell me they can't come to church on Sunday night because they got to get out and go to work in the morning. I'd quit that job. <laughs> oh, I believe God for a better job. Huh? Or I believe God for a better body or something. <laughs> As like I said, I believe the Lord's going to come on a Sunday night. People, you don't want to be left out what God's doing. No. Not today, not tomorrow. Not in the future. Not in the catching away. Not in the setting up of His eternal kingdom. You won't be left out in any of it. My motivation is not really missing hell. My motivation is I don't want to be left out of any good thing God's doing. Because it'd be hell to be left out of any good thing God's doing. People who are willing, you're willing to be left out. Mark this, you will be left out. I mean, if you're willing to be left out of the move of God, if you're just like, well, you know, I'll take it or leave it, whatever, you know, then you're going to be left out. God says hunger and thirst. It's got to be more important to you than anything else. There's got to be passion involved. I'm so excited about the things that God's going to do with little Anna. I'm so excited about it. This Holy Ghost woman, the things, that, the fire of God, the manifestation, the glory of God that will be revealed to her little life. Amen. My God, in heaven, it's beautiful and beautiful and wonderful. Amen. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I, I don't see how you did without her in heaven, but I'm certainly glad you shared her with us here on earth. Father feels that same way about every one of us. got great plans for us.
But we've got to want the plans that he has for us. Otherwise, we're going to lose out. We're going to be spoiled by the things of this world. We'll be sought without savor. God made us to be the light of the earth, the light of the world. In eating these, in eating these elements tonight, taking the cup, which represents his blood, eating the bread, which represents his flesh, we are declaring that we live by him, that we're one with him, that we've entered into a covenant relationship, a covenant that he made, that we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for him, who died for us and rose again. We're not our own anymore. Don't eat these things. Don't partake of these things unworthily. Don't take of these things casually. It's a consecration. Jesus paid a great price for us to have them. Let's rejoice in the partaking of them. Amen. In, in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Verse 23. And Paul's, Paul, you know, just really addressed the Corinthians had some out of control stuff they were doing. They got together and had a big feast. He's like, are you kidding me? They had a feast. They were so carried away. And some of them were getting drunk. I mean, they had some serious, they had some serious issues going on at the Church of Corinth. There's some people just bringing in all their other Gentile stuff with them, you know, Greek stuff with them. Paul says, that ain't the way it works here, guys. So he's, he's breaking it down here for them and for us. He says, for I have received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. He didn't, he didn't have chicken, boiled egg, a little bowl of salt water, a couple of different herbs, a little side of lamb, chunk of unleavened bread, cup of kosher wine and ain't that is in here this is the Passover that we keep and it's not once a year it's, he's our Passover we, as often as you eat and drink these uh, as often as you eat and drink you show my death until I come And after this manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, After supper, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye oft, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Hallelujah. Any good? It's like, if you judge yourself, you won't be judged. But if you, but if you judge the Lord, if you won't judge yourself, the Lord's going to step in if you're serious and he's going to judge you. But that's a good thing too because when you judge the Lord, hallelujah, you're chastened by him so that you won't be condemned with the world. That is beautiful and God good. So tonight, anybody won't judge yourself, you won't get judged by the Lord. Okay? And it's going to be a good thing. And I have this authority. And see, communion is a very special thing to me. 
communion, there's, in communion, things are unveiled, things are revealed. Jesus is made manifest in communion. He's, on the road to Emmaus, the disciples didn't even know him after they rose up from the dead. And then he took them in, basically started having communion with them because he was revealed to them in the breaking of the bread. In fact, of it is, when you look at the historical meaning of this as this bread was found in the holies of holies, in the holy place rather, it's called the bread of his presence. It's called the bread of his presence. It's called, it, 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 it's, it's, it's the face bread. It's, it's, the, it's, as, it's as though the Lord was hidden in this heavenly manner. And Jesus said, Moses didn't give you the true bread. I'm the true bread. I'm the bread of life. And when Jesus' body was broken, God's glory was revealed and poured out upon all flesh. Tonight, in the breaking of bread, we have in communion with the Lord. You can have an expectation of, of, of communion and fellowship with Him, an unveiling of Him, a revelation of Him. Don't make it common. Don't make it some ritualistic thing. And it's so sacred. It's so holy. It's partaking of the body and the blood of Jesus. It's eating his, it's eating the flesh. He says, my, my life I'm giving to you for food and drinking of his blood. My body's meat indeed, and my blood, he says, is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life in him, has this life. And of course, we know that's first and foremost in the fellowship of the new birth, the miracle work of divine grace, where the Holy Ghost comes upon us, fills us. I want everybody over here in this section right here, I want you to stand. I want you to just come. Everybody all in this section, just all in this section, come on. Be blessed. 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 She called among the list of Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be completely and totally healed in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Rado sia ranaya te. Blela tu ye pe. Be blessed. Boro star an angle. Ar sati digi. Be blessed. Mong leng lai. Mong leng lai mining bra. Be blessed. Be blessed. Mong leish te pai. Ar bedi katala ranana ne ningala. Es tu to ye mande. Be blessed. Ki ron sai. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be blessed. She could remind me. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Mong J Kai. Be blessed. Boro store an pitai. Be blessed. Eresur and anaini. Be blessed. Merene and Gando Seika. Man Ambre Neno. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Be blessed. The middle section, come. Come over here, stand over this way. Line up across over that way. Be blessed, son. Mong Jeli. Be blessed. Be blessed. Mamrona. Be blessed. Jikaranana la beda de Gishi. Avaravadisi de Kanana Mandabre. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Lord of style and mingix to Korongo, Digan and Amanda de Bete. Molombra de Isha. Be blessed. 
Mingelist, die Burnaura. Be blessed. Boke dann in Englisch. Be blessed. Lurisch die Brana bei. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Boke derra. Be blessed. Ihre dann an am Andechsto. Be blessed. Gelin Bangalitu. Belenglek Utanani. Just be a dumb Kushaya. Belenglek. Just be a lana mundo bananini. Just balana mananini. Just balana manani kedish to deri. Be bananini. Be blessed. Go in a manja letter, man, to be to you. Let the nana montana niki make a lana ni. Let the nana mosha lana maki get a katarani. Let a manana and any get secure. Be blessed. Be blessed. Belong then to bear an umbra suit a dekile. Jesu Gorananda de Bevesti Piano. Be blessed. Jiggling on Bandolo Serra Defi. Oh, Jaradana de English de Beranoso. Ha ha. Malaina, Balasara. Malaina, Borosorne. Ipisa. Ipise Bote. Ishapane. Listen, there's a realm of heaven. Hook up with the realm of heaven. There's a realm of heaven. Don't force nothing. There's a flow. There's a flow of the Holy Ghost for you. Better sit quiet than force, force anything. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Be blessed. O Karashila Manim Pratai. Be blessed. Be blessed. Alamande Pratai. Be blessed. Be blessed. Don Leng, Langley, Dora Staya. Bombe le cipra tacana in daladi. Be blessed. Be, be, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be 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 blessed. Be 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 blessed. Be blessed. Non da sedei de be the lana monkodaya. Be blessed. Mongolai de mara stara de pre. Thank you, Jesus. By now, and every, every sickness and every disease has to depart out of the body. Be blessed right now in Jesus' name. Ora stara mengalisto. The last section over here. Haras to kurimenga la batanda levi. Bambala vareve sticara non bada le reti stibara nombre de. Ora mama mana ne shebreni me. Be blessed. Hala mana na ne ne me ne. Be blessed. Hama mangolana mo sekara ne pe Be blessed. Be blessed. Kikara na na mongele ni bikala. Be blessed. Mingara na manderi sti pirutu. Be blessed. Malana na mongele ki prada na batu serete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bosta prana ve. Mengdo yishenglo para. Be blessed. Be it in a mangaleto yara sarabo. Be blessed. Torinana mangate in the po yase. Be let an amambanda than a mingate, Bishop Rotori. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be on an among Jerry, Mandamal, and an among the Rizziato. Be blessed. Kurama mama mana man is hereded in Mikara no manoma. Be blessed. Shikara mama manda maleleki no masotare. Hallelujah. Sibara nana mandum prebevi. Shikara mama mana is ibore bavidila. Be blessed. Be bed in among on the barana sebre Be blessed. Holy is the Lord. Be blessed in Jesus' name. 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 Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Karananana manje di mingando. Kalanamama mangi di namando lo Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. 
Be blessed in Jesus' name. Mongolandi Beira, Mamalana Nengeru, Surudana Mandevri Niana, Kirana Makamon, Kirana Mandandala Mangelene Mingala no Mandala, Chilena Mandala Lana Mandala, Nini and Dalana Mandala, Nini and Dolola Mananiani, Kirana Mangela Lani and Dolola Manda, the city Yala Lavala, Yala Levana, Lumala Mani and Romalali. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name and by the blood of Jesus, in the name and by the blood of Jesus. Every life transformed. Every life yielded and submitted to the Lamb. Today, tonight, as you take this bread, you are saying that you do not live for yourself, that you are, com you are making a confession that you live and you do well in Christ Jesus. You are partaking of a covenant. You are partaking of a vow. You are testifying of your fellowship and all the benefits and the grace that is there made available in the fellowship. Ah, for he, he bore his stripes, this wound in his body, and by his stripes we are healed. There is absolute divine health and complete healing tonight available in every dimension, spiritually, physically, financially. God wants to bless you. God wants to make you whole. All this life and blessing is in His presence. All this life and blessing is revealed to us and made known to us and given to us in the very body of Jesus. Understand the grace of it. Understand the unspeakable gift of it tonight. Commit yourself. Be wholly given to God from this day forward. As it take in place within your mouth this that represents the Lamb. This that represents our offering, our sacrifice, Christ Jesus. You take and you eat it, hallelujah. And you live by him, hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for this bread. Lord, we thank you for your body that was given for us. Your body that represents the, the very veil of the temple. Your body, oh God, that was rent for us so that we can step into the holies of holies and there live in the presence of the Father. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this communion tonight, that this fellowship tonight, oh God, will be greater and more impactive than any, any other time in every person's life in this place. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for the bread, oh God. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Gila mong. Gaba gama mama say. Gila mama ne mani. Thank you for your body. Thank you for your flesh. It's meat indeed. Thank you, oh God, for the healing of my soul and body. 
Thank you for this life that you've given to me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Paul said and likened his body to the veil of the temple. He likened his body to us being able to walk into the holies of holies through the body of his flesh when it was broken. The veil of the temple was rent into, torn into. Now God inviting all men to come and step inside. My communion, our communion tonight is when I take this body that was broken for me. I, I am allowed to engage in a revelation and in that much more of an understanding of how I get to live in the presence of the Father in the holies of holies. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your body. Every day, every day we live by Him. Just like the manna that came down out of heaven and was sustenance for Israel so that they could live by it every day. We live by Him, the spread of heaven. Jesus said, very important message. Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant which is given to you to erase sins. The blood washes and cleanses us tonight. Once again, as we fellowship with him in the receiving of this element that represents the blood, and we were drinking in, we recognize it in confessing that all our sins have been washed away. Don't have a confession that you still have sin after being washed in the blood of the Lamb. Your garments are spotless. Your spiritual life is spotless, yea. It's white like wool. It was red. It was red like the double dyed stain of crimson and scarlet. Red with the death of sin. Blood red with the death of sin. But he washed us. He made our, he made our lives Stainless, no stain, purified, purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this cup of blessing. Lord, we thank you for your precious blood that washed us, that cleansed us, that gave us life. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that the blood and the water that poured forth from your side is cleansing enough all the cleansing that we need. We thank you that the, what, the blood and the water and the spirit are one. They testify of one thing, this new life in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this cup of rejoicing. Thank you for this cup of blessing. Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Ah, hallelujah. That's sweet. That's sweet communion. <laughs> That's sweet fellowship. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you.
Yum. It's the cup of rejoicing, you know. It's not the bread of affliction. It's the bread of liberation. Hallelujah. It's not the cup of suffering. It's the cup of rejoicing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sara mamangeti shete lai. Mama na na manene, mama na ne na mangle, mama la nengeri mamunjo suri. Mama ma le 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 mangli te para la de dia. Zela la veti breve ki num jala mama ma mande de dia. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody stand with me, will you? Put your hands towards heaven. Just receive the good things of God that he has for you right now. Just receive the good things of heaven the Father has for you right now. Just go ahead and partake of the fellowship that the elements represented. Go ahead and take, partake of the fellowship that the elements represented. Go ahead and go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and partake of the joy and the fellowship and the glory. La kara shala bati ala manja kaya la mangara shala daya. So bramandeya shara mangeya la mandero. Se me me de kuna mamande la manja la ngeya liu. Kara da tia da ye ye be ye bra be ye be sha bra ba ko bi le lo bo mamandero. Zora mama mama ndebre mama mama ngaro mama ndolo be kibra mama mama le biaro Holy is the Lord Holy is the Lord Lord I praise and bless your holy name Lord we praise and bless your holy name Lord, we praise and bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your body. For your blood and your body, for your redemption, for your healing, for this fellowship. For this communion, for this fellowship, <laughs> for this communion, thank you, Lord. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come lift your voice in song and praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, living God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, living God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Living God, we thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we'll find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them. God, mang jale, mangaleo, mangaleo, hand me that other cracking mic. Everybody, listen, listen. <laughs> Listen now. Listen. Listen. <laughs> There's such a great increase in this place. Just so, <laughs> to go so much deeper in the anointing of healing in all of you that have been out on the streets. There's a breakthrough coming to you. And you have to hook up with heaven <laughs> and increase and know when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. <laughs> No longer be, <laughs> be settled in fear <laughs> that the miracle might not happen because your Father in heaven <laughs> has purpose for great works in this church. <laughs> Thank you, for all of those who have been discouraged that <laughs> healing hasn't come to your households or to you personally, you got to get out of the way because <laughs> the anointing and the increase in your own life is ready to come through like a mighty washing wind. And you got to hook up with that and you got to lay hands and faith in that and say, in Jesus' name. It shall be done. It is finished. The healing comes now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to see so many miracles through this church and in this county. So many documented miracles. So, so, but we all have to be activated, not just one man and one person, one team. This entire church has to take yeah. it upon themselves to be activated yes. in the things of God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Many of you know Anna had a heart condition and she had a hole in her heart and it didn't get healed. <laughs> and we talked to Pastor, he goes, Well, you just go deeper in the anointing that you're going to see holes in hearts healed. And she had another hole in another vein that didn't open. And so Joshua and I went after it and passed her. And on Wednesday, we got an echo report <laughs> and the hole is closed, the vein is open, and the branch is open. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's only because we stood in faith and commanded that thing and we refused to see the thing open. We refused to see that vein closed. And I want to empower you guys tonight. The Lord is calling you and saying, hook up with this faith. Run with this fire from heaven. Run with it. Believe it with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And do these things. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we thank you for your grace. Father, we thank you for your grace. 
Father, I thank you for your grace. What's happening? Huh? What's, what's wrong? So does anyone have pain in your shoulder and your head? If you do, would we'll come. The Lord wants to heal you. <laughs> right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, <laughs> I command your skin, your body to be normal in Jesus' name. <laughs> Let your arms towards heaven. Wave it around. Tell me when the pain goes. Tell me when the affliction goes. I command the pain to go out. I command your body to be made normal, your shoulder, your arm to work properly. Tell me when it goes. If you're having a problem with it, just come touch my hand. There you go. How is it? <laughs> there it is, healed. So many girls don't want to fall down with those skirts that you got on. You need to have a modesty cloth before you even come up. You have to resist the anointing. <laughs> How's your arm? <laughs> Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Be healed. Bako tayi ila sata ayi. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed right now. Lay hands on her, baby. Be healed. The name of Jesus, crucified and risen. Let your light be holy given to glorify Christ Jesus, crucified and risen in you. Listen, I hear the spirit of the living God crawling out, crying out to you. Father's got great things. He's appointed you to great things. He simply asks you to give yourself wholly for one purpose. Let him reveal his glory through your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Is anybody else sick or have pain in your body? Any other, anyone else with sickness? Pain or disease in your body? I'm telling you, there can be no affliction. There can be no virus. There can be no sickness. There can be no disease in here. Has to go right now. Glory of God's here. Healing power of Jesus Christ is here right now. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Be healed right where you stand. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Be healed right where you stand. 
I break off this yoke of affliction. I break it off of you right now. It has to go. I break it off of you right now in Jesus' name. Sorry. It has to go. Come off your body. Now it goes in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you to cause your love to come gushing up out of every person's innermost being right now. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to lift your hands right now. And I want you to yield to the love of God. The Holy Spirit right now will supply you with love. A love that you can grab a hold of on a continual ongoing basis. So right now in the name of Jesus Christ, be overwhelmed with the love of God. Right now, I break off every affliction and off every torment off your body. Now, in Jesus' name, go free. Go free. Out! Right now, in Jesus' name, every affliction. Receive. Just receive. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Just be, just be la no kubara name. Just be filled up with the love of God right now. Just receive. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Just be overwhelmed with the love of Jesus right now. Be overwhelmed by the love of God right now. Let the love of God flow into you right now. Let the love of God flow out of you right now. Every affliction and torment goes out of your body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every affliction, every torment goes out of your body right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Out. It goes out right now. Has to leave you now. Has to leave you now. The glory of the Lord is here. The glory of His presence is in this place. The fire of the Holy Ghost is here right now. All these things God the Father has for you right now. All you have to do is just receive. All you have to do is receive. Hallelujah. Just receive right now. 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 Just go ahead and receive right now. Go ahead and drink. Go ahead and receive right now. Go ahead and let that wonderful glory of heaven flow up. Right up out of your innermost being. Let that water for glory of heaven flow right up out of your innermost being. Right up out of the spirit. Right now in Jesus' name. Let heaven overwhelm you. Heaven's here to overwhelm you right now. Let the glory of God take full control of your life. Christ Jesus, He's here for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord.
Well, everybody, find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings. There's a miracle in it. There's a miracle in it. Don't forget. Don't forget. Worship the Lord with your tithes and offering because there's a miracle in it. Don't weary in well-doing. Don't weary, weary in well-doing because you're going to reap if you faint not. heaven comes down glory fills your soul let him fill you now let him fill you now thank you father for the anointing of the holy ghost